Live from New York, it's The Cube, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is day three of Stroud and Hadoop World and our event within the event, Big Data NYC. This is The Cube. The Cube goes out, we extract the signal from the noise. Uh, thank you everybody in our audience. We really appreciate all the, the back channels, uh, the questions that you guys send in. Let's see, Chris Harold is here, uh, back uh, from, uh, from, from day three. We saw you yesterday. Uh, he's the global field CTO of EMC's Big Data Solutions. And Kumar, oh, no, <laughs> Kumar's not here. Anahat. <laughs> Chinta Maneni is here, Chinta Maneni uh, from Blue Data, uh, sitting in for my friend Kumar. Hello Kumar, uh, hope you're feeling better. We miss you, but uh, not thank you very much for sitting in. Welcome gentlemen to theCUBE, it's good to see you guys Thanks, both. Thanks good to see you again. So, a uh, big week here. Uh, you know, the feedback from the Javits is more people, uh, more technologies, more customers demanding solutions, so, um, uh, let's start with, with you, Chris. What's the, what's the vibe from customers this week? Absolutely. Um, so Anant and I have just, we were, of course, talking before we, we came on camera, and uh, this is, a, this is, this is the, the time of operationalizing data analytics, mm. right? So um, we, we see it consistently in both of our, our separate customer sets and working together that you know, people were, were in that early adopter stage, they were trying it out, they were kicking the tires, they started to build a use case, build a model around uh, data analytics to do, obviously specifically, but any one of the analytics tool sets. <laughs> and then they got to a certain point and they went, this is awful. I, 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 can't, I can't run this way forever. I can't grow, I can't change, I can't be flexible. I really need to take that next step and operationalize Hadoop. And that's, that's where you had you know, organizations like, like Blue Data and, and EMC thinking, you know, we have the operational expertise with this. We have the IT expertise with this. There's got to be a better way to set this up for our customers. And I, you know, I really believe that we're addressing that solution need with our customers right now. And it, it really resonates as you start talking to all of the organizations that are here this week. Um, you know, people are really, they're hungry for that solution. And I, I think we're, what we're building together is really providing that. So not uh, th three big themes I've heard. The, you know, the, the big one, of course, is ingesting data real time. So we've heard, certainly heard that, but the other two are, are really, you know, make it simple, mm -hmm. yeah. right? We're, we're hearing that a lot. Uh, and then obviously there's a lot of you know, uh, 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 discussion around you know, solutions and, and, and being able to adopt it. We're hearing some side conversations about security, but you guys are in the make it simple business. So talk a little bit about Blue Data, what you guys are doing, and then I really want to get into where you guys you know, fit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, thanks. Um, so Blue Data is an infrastructure software company, and uh, what we're doing is uh, virtualizing uh, a pool of uh, servers or VMs that are provided to us and uh, we essentially uh, eliminate the barriers to uh, complexity with Hadoop by just making it extremely simple to get an Amazon-like experience in terms of spinning up Hadoop clusters, Spark clusters, and getting elasticity all on premises in the customer's data center. Um, and then we go beyond that uh, by making sure that customers don't have to always copy terabytes of data from their existing storage systems. Mm -hmm. um, as uh, you know, a first order principle of doing Hadoop, uh, but they can start with their fail fast experimentation by just spinning up clusters and pointing at data in place, especially like systems like Isilon that uh, have a, you know, petabytes of data to unlock value. So it's agility for the end users by you know, one click kind of clusters and pointing at data wherever it might be. Wait a minute, I thought you couldn't virtualize Hadoop. <laughs> I heard you guys chatting about that. Can we, can we talk about that a little bit because we've, there's so many myths about virtualization. I remember back in the, the, the day, it was like, you can't virtualize Oracle, you know? We would tell yeah, our practitioners, no, 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 that's not true. <laughs> but, um, so talk about that, that dynamic. You, you uh, share with our audience what you've learned there. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the implementation matters very much as to um, how you virtualize Hadoop. Hadoop is actually two integral pieces. One is the processing right. layer, and the other is the, the data or the storage layer. And when you virtualize Hadoop, um, you know, if you try to run all of Hadoop 
in virtual machines uh, with uh, virtual disks and so on, then you know you, you can get some good performance, but you'll have to do a lot of optimization. But if you separate compute and storage and run all the compute services in, in the virtual machines and um, keep storage outside and then have innovative technologies like what Blue Data brings in terms of IO Boost, then you can get performance equivalent or in many cases better than bare metal. Yeah. Okay, and then so talk about, Chris, the relationship uh, between Blue Data and sure. EMC. Where is, where is it? Sure, fit? so it, I, that, that's actually really funny. We were just talking about this. So uh, around about the same time that Kumar uh, left VMware and started Blue Data, um, was about the same time that inside EMC I was really kind of running around like a crazy person espousing this theory that virtual Hadoop should work and we should be doing this and you know sort of getting cockeyed stares from people like uh, you can't virtualize Hadoop. Um, and, and so it's really been a good synergy to come back together on the other end of that you know three four year journey now and realize that our vision is really pretty tightly aligned. So, you know, as, as you know, and we've talked earlier this week about the, uh, the Federation Business Data Lake platform that we're building and, and our partnership with, with uh, Blue Data around, again, easy, give me the big red push button get cluster experience that, that customers expect from Amazon and, and from their experience in, in service providing uh, environments. And, and translate that into my on-prem, my critical data. And where we really come together with, with Blue Data is in, the, is in the marriage of that simplification of the platform with our engineered ecosystem of tools around the outside for compliance and governance, for uh, ingest and, and index management, and for surfacing and, and consuming data sets and tools in a really tightly packaged, tightly integrated form factor that you know, we're, we're really targeting that, I think I, I said this to you when we, when we talked earlier this week, is this data science without the data scientists, mm -hmm. right? And just like we need Hadoop clusters without Hadoop gurus that, that, that people can easily adopt and, and implement, we need to be able to provide that packaged appliance-like experience to allow analytics to really reach all the places that it needs so, to reach. So you're yeah. creating a solution with Blue Data Software, EMC bringing obviously its IP around storage at presumably Isilon, right, right. Uh, all the connections to, to Hadoop, et cetera. You want to yeah, add? actually what I wanted to add, we're, we're big fans of the Federation Business Data Lake uh, strategy that mm -hmm. EMC has. You know, the ecosystem is, is very diverse. Um, there is obviously the distribution, Spark is emerging, there's also NoSQL platforms mm -hmm. out there and there's streaming platforms. So ultimately a solution, and then there's obviously the BI, ETL, visualization uh, tools. So I think what a customer is looking for is uh, a solution that spans the entire pipeline from right. ingest to serving the data and that could include a NoSQL layer at the end to build your mobile app or your web app, right? And so. Um, what we are essentially doing, partnering with EMC, is providing that essentially the container uh, in which the entire pipeline of the whole Hadoop ecosystem spanning from BI ETL tools to um, you know, NoSQL platforms and you know, things like even Splunk, for example, can run um, and make that easy for the customer to mix and match what they want. So ours is a software layer that allows customers to provision the pipelines of their choice. So you're containerizing all that complexity. Uh, the intent being simplification, not necessarily portability, right? As you think right. of it, to Docker containers. Yeah. Okay, so, so actually, not that's you, you bring up an interesting point to, to, to tie onto that. It is a little bit about portability. Oh, talk for about us. that. Then. Yeah. So, <clears throat> obviously, we're we're the federation. We're big fans of VMware. We, you know, we we they're part of the family. We we lead with our federation technologies. We that is our solution. Set. However, however, <laughs> uh, as you just heard with with IBM and 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 EMC on the cube together, not a minute and a half ago, right. uh, th this is a team sport, right? And yeah. we can't be a closed ecosystem. And just I mean, we've we've talked about this a number of times. Yeah. Yeah. We have to we have to support all the major Hadoop vendors, even though we have Pivotal. We have to support all of the potential virtualization stacks, even though we we support VMware. It's it is too much of an open ecosystem for us to force some sort of closure on people. And so for us, this partnership and and our and, and indeed our our work with Pivotal around Cloud Foundry and everything, it's all dedicated. It's all directed at portability. It's it's 
let the customer have the choice and the flexibility to innovate, but give them at least that framework, that structure, so that they're not off in the in the weeds all the time trying to sort out you know very esoteric problems. And so now I, I want to just clarify because people who know Kumar as the vSAN lead <laughs> might think that oh Blue Data storage play. It's not a storage play. It has, uh, That's right. Otherwise, yeah. you guys wouldn't be partnering like this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, so can you help us uh, visualize the stack, if you will? Um, yeah, sure. sure. Uh, I can take a, a quick stab at that, and then I can sort of <coughs> sure, let sure. Chris tie the Federation Business Data Lake into it. But essentially, you know, our stack is uh, a layer that is uh, software-defined big data from a cluster and in a compute perspective. So we are using Docker containers. Uh, to provision Hadoop clusters, so that's on the compute side only. Um, we have a layer called DataTap, and it's uh, essentially a way to connect to remote storage systems, whether it's HDFS, NFS, object store, um, and essentially get that data over the physical network through the native protocol and present it up to the Hadoop, the virtual Hadoop clusters in HDFS API, uh, using the same semantics of HDFS. So. We are not a storage system, we're not a software-defined storage play in the sense that we're not storing any metadata, we're not doing anything in that layer, we're just boosting the I.O. Uh, and uh, uh, have some innovations in that area in terms of how we kind of map the data into the Hadoop cluster. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, the Hadoop applications or Spark or BIETL tools, they run unmodified. Um, and so that really allows uh, you know, a customer to mix and match and get the pipeline they want in a few clicks. Okay, and the intent, of course, is to bring cloud-like simplicity on-prem, right. uh, which certainly the very large customers want, a lot of the mid-sized customers as, as well, but what about the public cloud? Can data tap, you know, treat some dumb cloud target if it needs to, or? So, as long as you have a pipe that yeah, yeah. can go <laughs> from your data center into a, a public cloud yeah. or into a hosted data center, don't care. Right. we don't care. So we are, our fundamental premise here is that networks are getting faster, that's really enabling mm -hmm. compute storage separation. You're going, you know, 10 gig networks are very common right now and, and 40 gig networks are upon us. And in fact, there's been research out there, whether it's reference architectures from, you know, other big data vendors or, or even from AmpLab, where they have shown that disk locality is irrelevant in the data center, if you think. You know, as long as you have a fast network, the CPU becomes the bottleneck. Yeah. Right, right. And Okay, so but but generally speaking, you know your customers obviously want to do stuff on prem. You guys have been yeah. advocates of the yeah. the hybrid model for a while. Maybe talk about that. Give us your perspective. Yeah, so I, I mean, our our initial solution focuses on prem. I think yeah. I think we all agree that, especially in small medium enterprise and even even on the upper end of of an SMB type, you know, small medium business type customer, um, the the concerns and and security needs and and I've especially a number of our early adopter customers for our platform have been heavily regulated. The, the data's not leaving the building, right? It's just, it's not, they're not doing it. It's not a cost concern, it's not, a, it's not even a size concern. It's, they just don't want to let go of the control. Mm -hmm. We totally get that. However, there are subsets of those workflows and workloads that do make sense sometimes to burst to the cloud. Now, obviously from a federation level, we have the, the benefit of having the best of breed technology. We acquired VirtuStream, uh, I'm sure as you guys yeah. know, uh, over the summer. Um, that, that deal's final and they're, they're a full federation member. What, you know, we're, we're all getting aligned and figuring out how to best engage with them, but I think that's going to offer us then that next layer ability to, tighter integrate the platforms together to then be able to offer that, not, not just even data burst, but actually burst compute need yep. to, out to the cloud, do your work and then bring the results back down with you and, and spin up, spin down cloud. Yeah, and you got a couple options there. I mean, VirtuStream's one, you know, vCloud Air, obviously Air, another course, one. Yep. I mean, VirtuStream, of course, big SAP presence. Yes. Um, yep. but, but, but that's sort of mm, inning two or three, yeah, right? Exactly. So. Yes, yeah, exactly, yes, yeah. We just we just don't see a lot of customers in this particular space that are, are wholesale put everything in the cloud or wholesale on-prem, there is a mix, there is generally a hybridization. However, the bulk of them much prefer to build this in-house. They just want, they want the cloud-like experience, they just want it in their own building. 
right? Yeah. Everybody wants to go to Amazon, but nobody wants to leave the house to go there. Well, I think what's, so. what's really relevant here is if you look at what Amazon, Google, and Microsoft are doing, the appeal of it is they're helping people build this data pipeline yes. as a service. Yes. But you're essentially replicating that on-prem. I mean, that's the yeah. Yeah. concept, right? That is Blue Data's tagline at the conference as well, is uh, build Hadoop as a service, Hadoop being kind of the broader term for big data, uh, you know, on-premises in your data center. Yeah. Um, so, um, and I think that's kind of what uh, customers are looking for, is uh, very simply put, how can I get that Amazon-like experience on-prem but have the level of elasticity? I mean, think about the ecosystem that we yeah. just talked about. Yeah. If somebody wants uh, you know, a pipeline with a BIE TL tool and a Hadoop cluster and a NoSQL platform, they're going to have to go rack and stack servers and build out that pipeline and something went wrong, they would have to you know, wait six or nine months to set that rate right. Mm -hmm. I think with a, with a compute storage separation and the ability to sort of automate these pipelines and orchestrate those pipelines uh, in a software-defined fashion, it's got kind of software-defined yeah. big data, yeah. you can mix and match based on the workload you have, different tenants, you know, multi-tenancies, mm -hmm. another way of saying Hadoop as a service. Um, you can have each line of business do different pipelines yep. based on their specific use case because you know the workloads are different. There's some streaming use cases, there's batch yep. analysis use cases, and uh, there's different um, you know, functional use cases across supply chain and, and marketing yep. and so on. Yeah, absolutely. And the solution is a, a dupe solution, it's a big data solution, it's a governance solution, it's kind of all of the above? Or? Yeah, it, really what we're building is an analytics platform, right? Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're focused 100% on the end-to-end -end capability of analytics. I need to get the data in, I need to store it, I need to be able to analyze it, I need to take those results, those insights that I create from that and surface those, and then I need to be able to drive some sort of activity with that, right? It, my, my boss, Aiden, who you had on this morning, is very fond of saying that insight, you know, copying and pasting insights into PowerPoint is bad because that's where insights go to die, <laughs> right? And what we're doing, again, and we, we were talking about this earlier, is that the top layer of the Federation Business Data Lake platform is, is, is built on Cloud Foundry. It's built on that app deployment and app management engine. And by bringing the, the, data, the, the data fabric, the data itself, the analytics tools and capability, and the application platform together in one package, I increase that data gravity, I pull everything so that I can, I can analyze data at rest, I can, if I, oops, I goofed up, this cluster is not big enough, or it's too big, or it doesn't matter anymore. And most importantly, after I create those models and I get those insights, my application platform is right there on top of it, running in the same framework with the same security and governance and policy management wrapped around it, and now I can actually start to drive behavior customer behavior, employee behavior, whatever it might be. And what's the, what about the services catalog, the menu, if you will, of all the Hadoop you know, capabilities that I want from the distro, the various types of distros, mm -hmm. the, the various streaming options that I have, the, the zillion, you know, projects that are announced every right, year. Yeah. How, how are you handling all that complexity? So yeah, in Blue Data, we uh, announced the App Store concept yeah. uh, in our product. So we have uh, an App Store, which is essentially Docker images of uh, all of the leading Hadoop distributions, multiple versions, uh, Spark standalone, for those who are interested in running Spark. And uh, we've also now added, um, you know, we had an extensive partnership with a whole bunch of BI, ETL, visualization vendors, mm -hmm. as well as, uh, um, you know, search vendors. So uh, we've also included the images of those applications in our app store. So it's really like an iPhone experience, yeah, as I was yeah. speaking with, uh, yeah. with uh, Chris earlier. You know, when you go and install an app on iPhone, you know, you know it's going to work. Right. And you have one person to talk to. Uh, if that doesn't work. So yeah. similarly with uh, Blue Data being that sort of software defined level layer, we have uh, you know, an app store like experience. You want to get um, you know, a, a BI ETL tool? Sure, you can get one click and you get Hadoop under the hood all wired up because it's software defined. Mm -hmm. and, and the next person, the next team that comes in wants a different kind of application because you know, there's the right tool for the right job they can go ahead and do that. And, and whatever distro I want, I mean, if I want yeah. the ODP, if yeah. I want, you know, yeah. Yapar, Cloudera yeah. Manager, that's, that's yeah. all. Yeah, so all today, uh, yeah, Blue Data supports uh, Cloudera with Cloudera Manager, uh, Hadoop, uh, HDP with Ambari, and uh, we're going to be soon launching, especially given that the ODP platform's on Ambari, it makes our life a lot easier right. uh, to support 
big insights and Pivotal HD and uh, in fact we've rolled out an application workbench that makes it uh, super easy for folks to register images of their own Hadoop distributions nice. and sometimes folks have patches and you know very mm -hmm. custom things that they've done they can do that as well yeah. and we're using docker containers to store these images and docker that's one of the key sort of advantages of docker is application packaging yeah. so we're making it easy for IT teams to be able to register their own applications we ship with about 15 of them out of the box. That's kind of a guide mm -hmm. uh, to how to add new new applications. And pretty much any popular capabilities that I could think of. I want and Zookeeper, I want Scoop, I yeah. want yeah, Flume. Yeah, typ typically, you know, there's <laughs> two classes, Scoop and Zookeeper. <laughs> Those usually come with the Hadoop distribution. Yeah. The more kind of the borderline ones are things like Kafka, do you want okay, it standalone great, right. or do you want yeah. it with Hadoop? If Spark, I want Data Torrent, right. I can... Do you yeah, want Data yeah. Torrent or do you want, you know, a, a, a you know, distributed, uh, uh, BI analytics uh, layer, um, any distributed platform, we have the capability to orchestrate that. Pretty much anything that you would, would potentially build on your own. Exactly, you're gonna and that's where that. I think the FBDL uh, fits in, is because I think when you go to customers, you mm -hmm. can offer them a whole variety of ecosystem products, but there'll always be this one product that may not be in the list out of the box, sure. and they will want to add yeah. that at mm -hmm. some point. Okay, and, and the go-to-market obviously is through EMC's channels, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because your Salesforce is slightly larger than, than yeah. Blue Data's. Um, In incrementally. So <laughs> making, yeah, <laughs> making stuff easy is hard. So maybe talk <laughs> about how you did that and maybe talk about the team a little bit. I mean, yeah. I presume many yeah. of the team from VMware, but a lot of other Yeah, no, I think we've got a like rock star engineering yeah. team, folks from uh, VMware, Cisco, uh, Intel, um, folks who are kernel hackers and so on on the engineering side at Blue Data. You know, our coming out party was last year. At same event, we won the Best of the Show award. Mm -hmm. And then since then, we've made a tremendous progress. Uh, but really, I think uh, the big change in the last 12 months for us has been, um, we started off with virtual machines. Um, we really uh, worked hard with our partners, uh, Intel and uh, uh, you know, many of our customers to uh, really kind of improve the performance in a significant mm -hmm. way uh, for some of the compute intensive jobs. And then along the journey, we partnered with uh, a, a whole bunch of ecosystem players, um, you know, with Hortonworks, Cloudera, mm -hmm. MapR, and so on, uh, as well as BIETL vendors, as I mentioned. Yeah. And the biggest move for us has been to Docker containers. We moved away from virtual machines to using Docker containers um, as the building block for the infrastructure, mm -hmm. for whether it's Hadoop clusters, whether it's BIETL tools. A couple of benefits there, a number of our customers actually wanted virtual machines. So they said, you know, I can give you a 10 virtual machines instead of physical servers, can you deploy on that? So this really makes it possible for us to deploy on virtual machines and I'll leave it to your imagination on where else this can go once you run on virtual machines. Um, and, uh, you know, we've uh, got dozens of customers, uh, you know, folks who are using uh, mm -hmm. our product with Isilon and have actually demonstrated uh, performance benchmarks where we're you know, just hands down beat uh, HDFS on disks or uh, remote HDFS because our data tab can connect to remote HDFS as well as remote NAS. So a lot of uh, great progress and you know, our team has grown. Uh, we were about 20 people last year. We're, uh, you know, just about 40 now. Um, we had a, a round of funding one month ago mm -hmm. where uh, we were, uh, we raised our Series C uh, with Intel. So things are very exciting and uh, we're really looking forward to yeah. partnering with EMC and uh, making our technology more broadly available. All right, Chris, I'll give you the last word. Um, you know, thoughts on the event this week, sort of the, the, the main takeaways from, from the show? Yeah, I, I th you know, I think, uh, I think the big, the kind of the big three for me are, are, you know, the make it simple message, right? That we're all 100% bought into. Um, the, the, the kind of the, the subtext underneath that is we're all in this together. Um, you know, we, just like, just like you guys have said, it's, you know, we're, we're sitting in a room with Cloudera and Hortonworks and Pivotal at the same time, you know, and because you have to, you can't, you can't go to market closed anymore. You've got to be able to support one another in this, in this ecosystem. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're bringing together a lot of, a lot of organizations that have traditionally not gotten along particularly well uh, and it's it's exciting and it's exciting to see those barriers coming down because it's important for the customer and that's that's really what the final takeaway from all of this is is that you know seeing the customer attendance go up so heavily and seeing the 
you know, kind of move away from these sort of the whales of, of industry, right? And, and these giant customers that are, that are generally represented at Hadoop conferences in the past and, and starting to see, you know, there's, there's some small business customers here. Yeah. Like, this is pretty cool, mm. this is exciting. And this is the right time for everybody to be, to be coming together in this message. I mean, it's, it's perfect timing for this. Awesome, there's a huge yeah. need in the marketplace for this. I mean, it is, you know, people can get, make, it, make it work, but a lot yeah. of people are struggling, and really, the market needs to, John Furrier said this the other day, really start to focus on the value. Start, stop talking about Hadoop, start yeah. focusing on, on business value. So gentlemen, yeah. thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, really yeah, appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, and Steve. Kumar, heal up, you know, so we could take that long walk to the Sequoia event that we did recently in San Francisco. You <laughs> wouldn't be able to make that, but uh, hope you're feeling better. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back. This is theCUBE, we're live from Big Data NYC at Strata Hadoop World. Right back. <laughs>